Hi everybody, welcome to Gumpa TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hot Mix Japan. This is episode 108. 108. 108. Triple digits. Yes. Still, still can't get that through my head. Anyway, today Ryan, I think you're going to talk about the results of the, the voting thing that you put up there uh, last week. Yes, the flagpole. The, no, the poll. <laughs> the flagpole. The poll. We'll talk yes, about the poll. but later. Uh, and yes, uh, first I want to talk about the new yeah. arrival because it's actually a pretty good day. This, this yes, thing, very yeah? exciting stuff. So the first one I want to talk about is actually the smallest one. It's the uh, the BB. Uh, like the uh, ST Unicorn and Shinanju and Delta Plus, it comes in the, the larger box. It's not the cheap SD, it's still, you know, retail price of 1200 yen. And uh, when you open it up, you can see why. Because not only do you get these, you know, larger runners, but you're also getting these these clear parts here. And they've even included this uh, this whole runner of clear Whoa. parts here for when it transforms into its destroy mode. Because a lot of people don't realize it, but this SD, like the unicorn before it, it actually transforms. So here's a shot of it in its oh, it's unicorn mode. Get in there. And there he's a uh, henshin, you know, he's changing into his. That's pretty cool on an yeah. SD Gundam. On an SD with Gundam. With parts and everything. Yeah, yeah, you'll, you'll be part swapping a little bit. For example, uh, well, maybe not. Yeah, actually, they open up. Uh, I would expect in a kit like that, you would just replace the V-fin, but it looks like this one, they've actually designed it to actually close and open, <laughs> which is actually really cool. So, uh, yeah. Unicorn. Actually, I must say, SD Gundam is getting more interesting. It is. Yeah. It's good to see that they're not kind of neglecting it. Like, oh, it's just a, for kids and let's just yeah. put out the simple ones. They're, they take the suits that the adults like and they uh, do a good job with them. And while I have this out here, I'll talk about this for, for those who don't know. Oh, yes. Uh, Hobby Japan Magazine in May. So we should see it uh, at the end of this month. They are, it comes with this thrown in here. This is the uh, display stand. Uh, the MG Banshee head here and uh, you can see that it actually transforms as well if you built like say the master grade kit you you know how the transformation works basically yeah. it works the same way but it's on a much larger scale and then once you have it you can attach your action base to it and you okay. can here's the new one right there it's all posed up here so that head uh, comes with the magazine and yeah yeah it'll come with a, in, in a box the same size as the magazine and uh, you can uh, you can build it. So if but, people uh, want that, they could just. If they want it, yeah. they have to go and look for the uh, Hobby Japan May edition. Yeah, on is, HLJ. Yeah. yeah, HBJ Mag one three zero five, and uh, we'll put a link on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. links. But my advice is, if you're interested in it, buy it immediately because it only comes out once, and that's it. All right, that's the the magic. I should have a question about uh, SD Gundam okay. from a viewer. Mm -hmm. Are we going to do an SD Gundam episode? Yes, we will do a what is SD or what is BB. Senshi, we'll okay. do that. So Question answered. There you go. Okay, now we have another Banshee here, but it's not SD, it's HG. Yes. And this is the uh, Banshee Norn in uh, unicorn mode. Could the names get any shorter set? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. RXON Unicorn Gundam O2 Banshee Norn Unicorn mode seems fine to me. Full cycle frame, prototype. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, let's have a look inside. Well, I'm sure we all have an idea because a lot of us have built the unicorns, the HGs. But. Uh, I don't recall there being this many foil stickers no. on the on the previous HDs. This is actually actually this is pretty cool. I'm actually really enjoying seeing this. And you can tell just by the design and the shape of these stickers that it's gonna go on the, the weapon, the shield. And uh, this is the unicorn mode. So of course he only comes with a single type of uh, V fin. When the destroy mode comes out, we'll get the different parts. But here's the you know shield. And parts for the shield. It actually assembles a little bit differently than the, the previous shields we've used to. And he even has his own uh, type of gun, which is quite different. It actually has this, this huge underbarrel attachment here, which isn't something you find normally. And uh, this one, I don't see much difference in some parts of the armor. But while we talk about add-ons, look at this thing. It comes with this little card for the, hmm. uh, the arcade game. And www.gundams-try.com. So if you haven't tried it, you can maybe scan this little card or type in a, din a code. Not for sale though. And uh, at least check it out, see what see what it gets you. It says Gump on the top there. And of course, advertisements for, I like showing everything in the box here. Advertisements for the Gundam episode six, which is now in the theaters here in Japan. So you can expect it. And look, there's a green frame pearl clear version of this Gundam. I'm gonna have to look into that. It might just, might be available at the theater. I'm gonna go check it out. <laughs> You're gonna watch Gundam at the cinema? I might. 
If you go to the very first showing in a yeah. theater in Tokyo, you have the ability to buy a clear version of, I think it's the Laws and Zulu. And next up, we have a Zaku. Most exactly. variation Zaku. This is actually oh. my favorite Zaku of all. Okay. It's the Shin Matsunaga. So I'm definitely going to open this up just because I love it so much. Let's have a look. I don't know if I mentioned this, but I, for sentiment, it has sentimental value to me because uh, the second Master Grade kit that I ever built was the Shin Matsunaga. And uh, I loved it. I thought it looked so great. Just, the, just the, that look. I think it looks, looks awesome. Tough. Looks like yeah. a gangster. He looks gangster. And when you're building the MG as a new guy like me, you're trying to put all these little, little armor collars on and you're like, oh, I'm, I suck. I'm going to lose every <laughs> piece. I'm never going to finish it. What do I do? Well, uh, fortunately for everybody here, all those uh, armor pieces, they come just as one piece here. Not individual peeps, pieces on a, on a spring. So you don't have to worry about that. No problem here. And the other issue I encountered when I was building the Shin Matsunaga was uh, this blue marking on his shoulder can you see that mm -hmm. uh, with the master grade it actually comes with um water slide decals it's one of the few master grade kits which will actually have a master uh, a water slide decal in with it included and uh it was as as i said my second kit and i'm trying to use a water slide decal on this curved surface on this thing that i painted not knowing i had to use a decal i was a newbie anyway i did a botched up job with this decal and when i saw that they were putting out the uh, Shin Matsunaga as an HG kit, my first thought is, what about that marking? What are they mm. going to do? Are they going to put it out as a, a water slide? That might be tough for a lot of the kids who are picking up, you know, this kit because it's smaller and less expensive. Well, we can report here, I've got the TV, that uh, it's actually just... News. Stickers and news. News flash. <laughs> news you, flash. You heard it here first. Uh, stickers. They're just, it's just stickers. But Bandai stickers have come a long way, especially in the last, you know, three years or so with the, the real great advancements and those really thin very adhesive stickers and uh this should be no problem we have these two markings here for the shoulder as well as the shield and whatnot so uh don't worry about water slide decals guys and that's all for the uh, new release yes yeah. now we are so. send now we're gonna send these to robert that's right all three of these will be going in a box and he will do a full build and work his magic uh, did you see the video where he talked about his gyoza the gyoza <laughs> it's pretty good very nice thanks robert yeah, yeah so i'm not ob object object to uh, sending him do you more have something stuff. special to yeah as, as a matter of fact i was uh, looking through the Gunpla room here, and uh, I found something for him. Here it is. It's the old SD Pat Labor we built, the D style, way back Sweet. when. You know, I think uh, I heard somewhere that uh, Robert might like Pat Labor. Yeah, I'm assuming always... he might. It's a robot, so. So enjoy, Robert. You get my hand me downs. Does he fit in here? No, no. He'll no. have to go in the packaging. He'll have to go in the box. All right. Now, uh, Ryan. Uh, yes. Is there something you want to uh, talk about? Yeah, let me. I'm just get my papers together. Okay. And uh, we can we'll do our discuss. thing. Discuss. Okay, our poll. Yeah. Facebook. Um, the voting thing. Yes, it was a, a resounding stuck, success. No. <laughs> stuck to the top of the page. Yeah. We had quite a few votes. Yeah. Now, I did put a comment in here to people. Uh, I will finish the Falcon. A lot of people asked. Yes, yes. Don't vote for Gundam. <laughs> I will finish the Falcon. I ain't going to build it. That's Sid's job. Now, why is there. <laughs> Gundam UC era. Yeah, somebody entered the Gundam UC era at yeah. the top, and it being Gundam and these people being Gundam TV viewers. 145, I think it was like no double surprise. the votes. No surprise, it well, rose I, to the top. Do people not know me? I don't yeah. know, maybe they're thinking you're Ryan. I know some people think you're Ryan. Yeah, I think it's messed up sometimes. So, so I'm ignoring the top one. Uh, <laughs> it then goes to Macross, yeah. Almond Core, yeah. Metal Gear Rex, Evangelion. Yeah. Actually, Mac K and Evangelion almost the same. Nice. Then a PG Riser. That's a Gundam 2 the yeah. last time I checked. <laughs> Muv Love, <laughs> my favorite. Pikachu. You should build a Pikachu. <laughs> Virtual you on? You should. Gyoza. Yeah. I guess Gyoza. somebody saw Robert's episode. Yeah. And then that show, Valve Rave. Valve Rave. Only one vote, sorry, mate. So I am building a Macross. Yeah. And Thanks uh, to all uh, who participated, except for yeah. those who voted for the Gundam C. Uh, That's what happens when you have an open poll. It's like but I. Yeah. It's like a 2000 election. I'm not, yeah, not going to do that. W. Bush <laughs> messed me up. All right. But yeah, a lot of comments. Thanks very much, guys. A lot of questions okay, about so, my Okay, uh, so have you chosen the Macross that you're going to build? I have. Okay. And I will hold it up now. All right. Bang. This is the SDR 04 MK XII, whatever that is, Destroyed Phalanx. And didn't you say that uh, Gundam had long names? 
It's a Japanese thing. Okay. We've seen some of the names on our website. <laughs> <laughs> I know. And this is part of their 30th uh, anniversary thing. Oh, this yeah. This is done by Wave. Oh, so it's not a, a band, I think. No, it's not. Oh, it's not it's a cool band. Wave. Now, yeah. Wave does a lot of the Mac stuff. That's true, yeah. So, um, I've never done a Wave kit, mm -hmm. so this will be an interesting experience. I mean, compared to the Kong, it's uh, a lot simpler, I would say. You say until you open those boxes. No, no, bags. it's actually... The good thing is, um, I mean, with this particular kit, I kind of want to actually do some painting again and some spray yeah, painting. So I've, we'll get I've some. I've heard that before. We'll get some. No, this time I mean it. We'll get some nice footage outside. Okay. And uh, it was, I had so much fun doing that tank, you know, that yeah, kind yeah. of camera that, style. That so awesome. I'm kind of looking forward to. Uh, actually, I, I probably won't follow this camo style, mm -hmm. but I will find one I like. Okay. And uh, here you can see the back. And it does come with. Some decals. Decals. So I'm kind of excited. Okay. This is a new kind of... Actually, do I often do mech? I think you have done several mechs in the past. But like a mech mech. This is like a mech mech. <laughs> Iron Kong wasn't like a mech mech. Yes. It's, yeah, Iron Kong is not a mech because it doesn't look like a mecha. Is that what you're saying? It's a Big Mac? Big Mac? It's a Big Mac something. Okay. Whatever, Sid. Okay, well, that's what I'm going to build. Wow, and okay. I'm kind of actually excited. It seems like a, I can't say a departure for you because, no. uh, you know, you built your spaceships and you built some robots. This is kind of... I'm just hoping that I can actually do, I hope it's a quick build and then I can mm -hmm. actually do some painting. And because the weather's warmed up, I might yes. be able to get outside. It's no longer zero degrees yeah. outside. Yeah. But Sid, you yeah. are going to wow us. Uh, I can't not guarantee that. But uh, yeah. Uh, what do you got? What do I got? Well. As you know, last uh, episode we yeah. did the What is Masquerade and we did a brief overview of mm -hmm. the Masquerade line. And unfortunately, due to time constraints and you know us being busy and also the av availability of certain things I wanted to show, mm -hmm. we didn't get around to talking about every aspect of Masquerade that okay. I wanted to. So today we're going to talk about uh, Masquerade, another aspect of them and mm -hmm. associated with that is uh, Kotoki Hajime. Okay. So this is the uh, Kotoki Hajime episode of Gunpa okay. TV. This is uh, the first. Um, version Kotoki Master Raid model. Of course it's the RX782 and as you can see it's a little bit meaner in the face. I think mm. it looks a lot more, how do you say, mo uh, menacing. Manly. <laughs> Man, I wouldn't say manly but it looks more like it's prepared to do some war <laughs> as opposed Damage. to if you look at the, uh, you know, of course the first animes and stuff like that. It's, it still looks like kind of a, a robot, toy robot, but this thing looks like the real deal. And uh, this is actually um, the first kit, as I said. It was made in 2002. Oh, okay. So, and uh, a lot of people are like me. Like, they first discovered Katoki Hejime through the Master Grade model line. I'll move this guy to the side here. And my first exposure to uh, Katoki was actually <laughs> the Shinanji. Right? Here is the Shinanji. Oh, this monstrous thing I just beautiful. got at HLJ. And I was like, this is the most incredibly looking, incredible looking gun or model or robot I've ever seen. Who did this? Right? And I started learning about Katoki Hejime. It turns out that... Uh, Kotoki Hajime and this line of uh, his little space in the Master Grade line here is uh, pretty um, significant. Mm -hmm. I mean, they let he redesigns a lot of these um, these robots, adds his little flair to them, and then they take them and they make the model kits out of them. And uh, he's of course he's done the mission engine. We'll talk about actually the, the MGs first here. Here's here's his wing version car, and uh, like all other version cars, they are quite different in the presentation to the builder when it comes to the manual. So I'll get out the manual here. Mm -hmm. Normally a manual, it's it's pretty lean and, and you open up in the center and then you get a bunch of action shots like this one, okay? And, uh, but the uh, Katoki Hajime, they actually fill it with a lot of information right on the first few pages. Oh, okay. And, uh, and of course the, the monster decal sheets. At These the designs end. are slightly more ornate. Uh, would possible, you say? but the, I would say, I cannot argue with that point, okay. actually. I'm going to put this away because I want to show some, another aspect here. I'm going to get a Shinanji manual. It's easier to see all these things here. As I dig through the pile of stuff that is there. Now, a lot of the, uh, the manuals for the Kotoki Hajime kits are actually... Uh, they actually include a lot of like schematics, okay. CAD drawings, and actually how they went about incorporating his design into the actual model form, which is actually really cool. And a history of the suit itself and uh, other stuff that he's done. 
And uh, here, of course, is the back page, just like the wing. <laughs> and Katoki Hajime is famous for using a large amount of marking stickers. Mm. And they all have these, these kind of like this pattern here. Let me get out this guy first if I can. If you could, Ryan, zoom in right on his shoulder here. You see that little red circle and then the text. Mm -hmm. These markings are found all over the kit and on every single Katoki Hajime model. So you can almost tell it's a Katoki Hajime design, not by the look of the model, but actually the markings on the model. And I'll bring out, uh, here we go, the Victory Gundam here. And you can see he's got a whole oh, yeah. page of stickers here. All right. And uh, while I got the box open, I will show the ma manual for uh, the Victory. It's one of my, one of the uh, Stranger Gundams. I actually like this model, although it's really, really difficult. But you can see this one actually transforms and they show all the little CAD work, artwork here to give you an idea of just what went into designing this version Katoki plastic model. Now he's done a fair number of kits. And of course he's done the unicorn and Sorry, moving this around, lots of stuff. The unicorn. Oh, Let me yeah. show this guy. Full armor unicorn, complete with all Crazy. his stuff. I imagine he had a great time drawing this thing. He's also done the, uh, the new Gundam version Ka. He's also done the San Time, which just released. Those two are new. He did the Victory, and then they did the, the Core Booster. And uh, actually, I wanted to show these because Katoki Hajime had a significant part in the drawing of the, uh, the V Gun. The Victory Gundam. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about Katoki Hajime trivia. Ryan, how old do you think that uh, Katoki Hajime is? Well, if he's like Koike-san, <laughs> maybe in his 50s or 60s. Ah, uh, you're close. That's pretty rough guess, though. He's kind of hard not to miss by giving me two decades. But uh, he actually, this he was born in 1963. Okay. So this year he is 50 years old. Wow. Okay. Right on the nose. So happy birthday this year. Happy, happy birthday. Year. Ryan, are you still going to be playing with plastic robots when you're 50? I wish. Yeah. I mean, I would love to be a designer. Yeah, no okay, that was your job. Oh, That'd be great. Sweet. Um, so uh, a lot of people don't realize everything that Katoki Hajime has done. So mm -hmm. he first kind of got started in, I think, Gundam Sentinel. And then he did uh, the more known OVA, which is uh, 0083. He went on to do uh, the Victory Gundam, the V Gundam, and also the, the G Gundam, where he designed, I think, all the bad guy suits. Mm -hmm. And then uh, probably his most significant work, where he really became famous, was his work with uh, Gundam Wing. Okay. So uh, he actually drew uh, most of the uh, the Gundam Wing suits. Now, I'm oh, just pulling this out hey, because this is a... Uh, that was my first kit I bought when I came to Japan, like on holiday. Yeah, yeah. Well, for a lot of people, they beautiful see this. Beautiful kit. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, they see this and like, oh, this is crazy, Wing, this is, uh, you know, I'm going to build it. Um, this isn't necessarily the EW version of the, the, the Wing Zero Custom, but... This is one of the uh, more famous Mastery model kits. And uh, Katoki Hajime had a big hand in uh, the artwork for oh, it's epic. Gundam Wing Endless yeah. Waltz. And even today, here we're going to bring out another Endless Waltz kit. Like this kit here, mm -hmm. it's an uh, Endless Waltz. So by default, because uh, Katoki Hajime did the, uh, the artwork for Endless Waltz, all the Endless Waltz kits are uh, version Ka. Okay. Even though they do not have that same kind of, you know, box, box or, art yeah. and manual and stuff like that. But if you uh, actually have a, a look in here, side here, this is the sand rock. You can see that they do have a lot of these markings that are, mm. would associate with uh, Katoki and his work here. So uh, even without uh, not counting these kind of boxes, you look at uh, the sand rock and the, the sorry, uh, heavy arms and those other EW kits, the death side, that's uh, associated with Katoki Hajime. And while we're talking about Katimi, Katoki Hajime, Katoki Hajime. Say that three times fast. It's tough for me. Do you know what this is, Ryan? No, I don't know what actually this is. This is the, uh, the V2 Gundam. Yeah. From the V Gundam, Victory Gundam. Uh -huh. And now uh, a lot of people really, really, really want to see this in, in uh, Master Grade form. Yeah. And we haven't got there yet. They actually did a, a poll once a couple years ago on what kits do you want to see in uh, the Master Grade. I think the O was number one and this is number two. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have a Master Grade yet. But this design is so cool that I wanted to show it to you. And luckily yeah, for us, striking. we have the, uh, the 160 scale here. So I'm going to pull, it, pull this out. It's, uh, it's actually called, uh, what is, what's this? It's called Real Marking Version, right? Okay. So it's kind of like perfect grid scale. Of course, it doesn't have the detail. But it comes with the real markings. Now, this is an older kit. So the markings are 
What yeah. age do you think this one is? Uh, I'd have to look, but okay. the code the the code is fairly old, so uh, you know probably uh, more than ten years from now. Okay. I think. Uh, look look at the size of the shield. <laughs> it's even bigger than the PG Strike Freedom Shield, and of course everything's molded in color, and that that V two yellow. It's actually quite cool, and I really really am hoping that Bandai surprises us and releases this as a uh, as an MG or even an RG soon enough. You can see here's where the Decker guy and uh, like uh, if you don't know the, the story behind these uh, these kits they actually uh, Ryan they actually transform oh is it like yeah. a easy transform do you think oh uh, well this one's a pretty simple kit with okay. a few parts so I think Ryan you could do it I could do it I think you could but while we're still talking about uh, Katoki Hajime uh, a lot of people may not know this but he also has done work for uh, uh, Virtue on the games, and oh. I've actually got uh, one of those things here. This is the, uh, or this is Super Robot Wars. I don't have the Virtue on because it's sold out. This is a Super Robot Wars. He's done uh, work for them as well, and this is the um, Temjin. And uh, what uh, Bandai has done is they actually started this this line just for him. It's called Composite uh, Version Ka. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, they use their their action figure technology that you see a lot in the Gundam Fixfiguration mm -hmm. and they uh, use Katoki Hajime's designs and they actually put them out as best as they can to his uh, his drawings as, and uh, you get some pretty crazy stuff like this Temjin is pretty awesome and it comes with all those huge weapons in the back there. I like See that's the something I didn't realize Sid and thanks for educating me <laughs> about this version I had no idea it was one guy. Yeah it's just it's just one guy that Katoki Hajime, he's everywhere, and uh, he's still doing artwork. Like, of course, we know he's still drawing uh, some of the stuff for Bandai Mobile Suit Designs for the version come, but he's actually still doing artwork. And in if you go to uh, the Hobby Japan magazine, which I've got right here, and uh, you flip to the pages, you'll see that they often have like this little kind of promo, and they actually include his artwork. So if you're a collector of Katsuki Hajime artwork, a lot of people what they do is they actually take. The, Get the Hobby Japan magazine. I'll try to hold it out as best I can here, and they will uh, take out carefully, remove this uh, this little fold out, and uh, some people have these posted on their walls. He's yeah. got actually quite Isn't a bit of following. Nico or something. Uh, this is uh, Feyen, I think her name okay. is. Yeah, the diva Feyen from yeah. Virtual On. This is the Virtual On one I wanted to try and find, but we didn't have. But look, I don't know if uh, you're too up to date on your anime characters, but check out this version, Ka. You know, wow. Arumiya, very yeah, famous uh, anime, has yeah. nothing to do with Gundam, but uh, Katoki yeah. got his hands in there. He was doing, uh, for Tomashi Nation, which is a special event, he actually uh, helped design this kind of uh, monstrosity that she has strapped to her. And you can see, if you look at all the markings here, <laughs> yeah, this is definitely... It's, all, it's, it's got his fingerprints all over it. And uh, I've actually run into a couple of um, Gunpla model builders uh, mm -hmm. who actually exclusively just go for Katoki Heji mix okay. They'll just only build the Katoki Hajime stuff, and then they collect the figures. And even just that, their collection is huge. Huge. And uh, there is one kit that I really, 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 really wanted to show everybody. But unfortunately, it's never in stock. And can you guess what that is, Ryan? The Dendrobium. No, uh, <laughs> he did do a Dendrobium, though. He drew one. Yeah? He drew one way back when, one of those first designs of the Dendrobium. Oh. Okay, this is the ball. This is the shark mouth version of the MG ball. And uh, Katoki Hajime has actually done a design for a oh. ball. If you can wow. imagine that. That's so a version ka. A version ka MG ball. And unfortunately, it's hardly ever in stock. So I just grabbed the shark mouth version. But can, you can imagine, like, even this thing. He's redone it, he's drawn it, and then he's put all his little markings on mm -hmm. it. And uh, the ball, surprisingly, for something so non Gundam. It doesn't yeah. look like a Gundam. No, it doesn't. It's such a popular kit. And I encourage anybody who hasn't actually tried to build a ball to give it a try. This is actually really, really cool. So I'm going to move this over here while I uh, hold my best friend here. All right, uh, that kind of concludes my little look yeah. at the uh, Katogi. I actually, things. I didn't realize. I mean, MG is so comprehensive. I guess one yeah. episode just wasn't well, enough. Then that's just a part of what Katoki Hajime mm -hmm. does, right? So he's everywhere, that guy. And anyway. he's good. Uh, on to the questions and comments. Questions time. Okay. Gundam Beginner on YouTube. Yeah. Ryan, get an MG. Wonder which kit would which kit would you pick? Which, I would pick would you kit, which kit would you pick, Ryan? I really like the Shinaju. I yeah. think Sid. I think it's one of your favorites. Oh, I as love well. it. Love it. And I, I think it's 
it just stands out yeah for me well, you're in luck because there's another one coming at the end of the month yes yeah. maybe i'll do a poll good <laughs> <laughs> yes uh next some name xxo <laughs> inashi uh, xx hey sid and ryan what are what's your forecast for the rg of 2012 2013 december i'm laying a bet on an rg strike freedom the rg oh my god for december what do we have last year the zeta what can match up with the zeta that's a good question i don't know uh, you know what i'm gonna say it yakushiki and i don't even know why i just said it though because <laughs> they did the titans and we're still kind of in that well if you guys have an opinion about what the kit will be in did december you? spam youtube It'd be awesome and it could transform because they've already got it with that stuff oh. with the zeta yakushiki i want to see it next yep justin sinel okay Oh, by the way, MG Shinanju OVA doesn't come with the new hands. Yes, uh, there's a lot of comments about this. And, uh, okay, so let's talk about this. This actually... Uh, it's been brought up a few times. It's been brought up, well, in the last episode it sure was, because I mentioned that, oh, this, the new Shinanju should be coming with new hands. Well, it turns out I'm wrong. And uh, I would like to point out that I don't uh, usually say... I, I, sorry, I... You don't admit you're wrong? I always admit I'm wrong. It's not all the time. <laughs> No, what it is, is I don't uh, like to say something is specific unless I know for sure, only because we've got the information from Bandai. Okay. But at the time, we, I hadn't received any of this information. Bandai hadn't given us any of the, of the actual details. And I had assumed, which mm -hmm. is a mistake on my part, I'd assumed that Bandai, in releasing a new Shinanju, was going to use a lot of the concepts that they did from the Shinanju Stein, which they just released. You know, the lighter frame, those, two point, or those, uh, those type hands. Uh, the um, the handle that would work with those hands and those giant bazooka which they just made for this time and it turns out that that's not the case apparently they're going to use the other uh, 2.0 hands that come with the original Shinanji okay. which makes me ask the question what's the point of making another MG Shinanju if you're not going to implement those kind of design changes that you brought out when you brought out this time what are you I, doing Bandai? I have, a, I have a question what are you doing? as well is How it just to sell a kit with less decals <laughs> what are you doing Bandai? And how did we know we were wrong before the internet? Nobody was wrong before the internet. <laughs> the internet came okay. up, oh, everybody's wrong. Okay. And arguing. Next question. Yeah. Rob's Gaming Network. Hey guys, thanks for doing the show. Mm -hmm. I've seen you guys talk about a couple of different Kotobukiya kits, and I'm now interested in purchasing a few from HLJ. Good on ya. Kotobukiya is cool. Yeah, looking for, for that business in the near future. Look okay. for that business in the near future. Mm -hmm. Keeps us in a job. To answer the question <laughs> about holding weapons in hands, Try sticky tack. Yes, sticky tack or blue tack. That substance people use to hold posters on walls. Sticky tack, yeah, I know that. Uh, you know what? I do use that quite often. And if I use it properly, you don't notice. So yeah, some of the stuff I've shown on here, uh, having to try and get it to hold of weapons while I move around or you know, a little accessory here and there. I have used the sticky tack. So the truth There's comes the, out. The secret's out. <laughs> Can't, I, I, I don't know how to use glue, it's all sticky tack. Next is Yay J. Okay. Dear Sid and Ryan, as a model on a budget, what method of painting would you recommend? Also, does shelling out the extra cash for the Tamiya slash Mr. Hobby products create a drastic change in the finished product? Uh, I imagine he doesn't live in Japan, so getting Tamiya and Mr. Hobby is difficult and more expensive for him. I think that he would have comparable results with other model spray paint available in his own country. However, the cheapest way of painting is probably to fork out some money for an airbrush and compressor bombshell boom you, you buy that first yeah it's an investment but after that you're just buying these little jars of paint yeah. and mixing them with whatever and using that and it's probably the cheapest way to go especially you, for people who can't get spray cans easily if you've watched boss Balls with brian like he uses an airbrush and yeah. you know the cost of that little paint yeah. compared to a spray can yeah is quite different mm -hmm. but yeah airbrushing yeah. is cool wouldn't it okay one day i don't want it next do. <laughs> FIL. Always, I'm waiting for a new episode with anticipation, guys. Love the show. Thank you. So, do you think that since you're showing the next epic, ep since they show, they are showing the next yeah. epic episodes of Unicorn, if we're going to see more new mobile suits for Bandai to put out, can't wait to see what they're going to pull out of their sleeves. Well, Bandai is going to put out. <laughs> Bandai. If there's Cabin, one thing mate. I've learned about them, <laughs> they put out. Uh, yeah, I mean, in some ways, 
of course, with the new anime, there's going to be new kids. Oh, That's yeah. just the way it is. And people are like, oh, I can't wait for them. In the Japanese blogs, because the OVAs. Panda is going to be putting out, no but, doubt. No doubt about it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, in some ways, Bandai is even ahead of the game. If you look at Gundam Age, like pretty much Gundam Age is an anime and they used to sell this line of kits that they had already started dreaming up, you know? So they're actually <laughs> getting ahead of themselves because uh, they're prepared to... They're ahead of the curve. They're ahead of the curve. Same with the uh, Gumpla beginners. You know, I, I've got a great idea. Let's sell this model and then put out an anime about this model. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, don't worry. Gundam UC kits are going to be coming. Lots of them. I actually had one comment on Facebook. Tell Bandai to do something. Yeah. I'm like, you have no idea how big Bandai is. <laughs> it's, not, it's not about them being big. Of course, they're big and they have, they're you know, their, their power that they can exert somewhat. But Bandai only does what Bandai wants to do. <laughs> and even if you think, you know, Bandai, if you did this instead, you'd make this much more money. <laughs> no, we're going to do it this way. Bandai does what they want to do. And that's about it. <laughs> they don't do much else. So. Next is from Omar Cortez. Hey, Sid and Ryan, I wanted to know if you guys had any info on the MGH3 and MGHFX. Uh, well, we saw the prototypes at the uh, Gumpla Show. Expo. Yep. And uh, since then, we haven't heard anything. So, well, they'll arrive a good eventually. Good question. I mean, it depends how far along they are in the process. I mean, we also saw the, uh, the prototype for the uh, Ale Strike remaster MG, which I think is April. So we saw it, you know, almost six months ahead of, ahead of time. So uh, with the uh, the age of X or H three, it could be that they're still they're still planning on bringing it out, but it's just going to be after they put out these other big releases. So as again, again, we don't really know what's coming until only like three months in advance or less. So sweet. Uh, next is DJ Eric Fury. I mm -hmm. would like to add that this new show was pretty good. Nice getting a sp perspective on the MG line. I do have a question that other viewers may want to know. When selecting an MG, how do you know what series it's from? Mm -hmm. If you do not watch the anime, okay. Uh -huh. uh, for the most part, with MG, aside from you know some things like the uh, Katoki Hajime kits that uh, don't have the series on them, the majority of them will have uh, a little marking near the top here. And here's an example. This is the it says Master Grade, and right below it there's this little Gundam W. Yep. That's the Gundam Wing. So okay. that's the series it's from. And uh, if you want to pass me the uh, the Shin Master Naga, we'll use this one here too. It's not an MG, but it's the same idea. This you'll see it's got. MSV, mobile suit variation. So uh, these are just variations of the suits that appeared in the, you know, OVAs and things like that. And uh, pass me that Gundam UC while we're at it. This is the one that's easy. You can see this one coming a mile away. This is Gundam UC, and look at the thing they've got at the top here. It's, oh, yeah. it's huge. So, yeah. It's a dead giveaway. Dead giveaway. So it's pretty easy actually to tell what, uh, what's coming. what series it came from. Yeah. So. Uh, Raymond Chen, as she mm -hmm. posted a nice question on uh, the Hobbyling TV, yeah. but it was just about are we going to do SD Gundam and yes yeah. we are, sir. Yeah, it is a good question because I... And he says here, yeah, despite the small sizes, the SD line has gone through quite a bit of change over the mm -hmm. years as well, but its numbering systems and series differenti differentiation is probably the most complicated and confusing of them all. It's true, he's not lying. <laughs> There's so many of those things. Yeah. And last but not least, okay. Gundam X20A. Regarding Sid asking what kit was one of the biggest turning points in MGs, in MGs, I would say the RX-78 II Gundam version OYW One Year War yeah. is a big turning point in MGs. Reason being, it was the first to introduce the 2.0 hands, even though it wasn't the true version 2.0, since the rest of the frame was slightly modified version 1.5, and because mm -hmm. the 2.0 was eventually made to be more anime accurate. Yeah, I think uh, if I remember correctly, the 1.5 or the one year war it actually had a different design for the leg frame okay. where it came as like one piece on the runner and you cut it out and kind of just clunked things into place and then it would start to bend similar to what we can uh, expect now from RG okay and my first experience with Gundam the very first master grade very first Gundam I ever built was the um, Shin Musha which mm -hmm. is actually use uses that uh, 1.5 frame and I was like tinkering with the legs like oh my goodness this is crazy and then the next Gundams I bought after that didn't have anything like that <laughs> like, everything's different what am I doing here but yeah, actually this brings up something I want to say. Uh, when the, with the uh, last episode of the Master Grid, mm -hmm. I only kind of just touched on things because there's so many, there's so much to talk about. I had to just kind of squish it all down. But uh, I kind of want to introduce this kind of like maybe a segment in the show, Ryan, where uh, if there's a specific kit that people want to uh, discuss or see, mm -hmm. that they let us know. Like for example, I want to see the Master Grade G Gundam. Mm -hmm. 
because it was one of the first ones to use an interior frame. And then, you know, it's a, it's a significant kit. We'll uh, bring on the show. We're not going to build everything, of course, but we'll uh, actually look at it and uh, talk about uh, where it was in its place in the, the Gunpla okay. timeline. And, yeah, cool. And uh, what it introduced to the to the um, Master Raid line in general or Gunpla in general. And I kind of want to just uh, do that each, each week. So for the viewers out there, all you need to do is just kind of nominate a kit. Like, I'd like to see you guys talk about the blah, blah, blah kit because blah, blah, blah. And uh, we'll look into it. If we have it in we'll, stock. We yeah, if we have it in stock, on stock we'll uh, show it on the show and give you credit for your comment. And uh, let the discussion begin on our on our YouTubes and Hobby League TVs. Mm. So now that's for the viewers to decide. Talking about social media, I guess. Ah. We do have a Facebook page. We also have a Facebook page. We have two, but Hobby Link TV is kind of our Gundam yeah. one, but we do have a big Hobby Link Japan one as well. well. You know who does not have a Facebook page? Mm. Katogi Hajime. <laughs> he has a fan page. Actually, yeah, it's pretty cool. So if you're well, on Facebook, Japan, maybe has a, maybe Hajime, has a mixy, a mixy you account. You can go to the fan page yeah. for uh, Hajime. Uh, we do have Hobby Link TV, and we're yeah. currently working on a new one. Yeah, it's pretty to be slick. Excited. It's pretty slick. And uh, yeah, our YouTube channel, please subscribe to us. Yep. Um, and yeah, just keep giving us great comments. We get a lot of good feedback. And um, we're glad you guys enjoy the show. That's right, because there's more coming. Yeah. Lots of more coming. Uh, just to pump uh, Brian's show, if you want to see some kind of advanced spray painting and stuff, you mm -hmm. know, check out what he does. Yeah. Also check out Scott Finish's LFA. Yeah, that's and awesome. If you want to see how to gloss up a car or even to apply to certain kits, I really yeah. recommend looking at it. And Toy Tengoku actually glued a figure that broke in half back together so wow. if you're interested in gluing Hobby your TV figures back together everything <laughs> what can i say sir? what can i say we do good work i don't know uh next week i should have some macros to show you yeah and i'm and going to be talking more about gundam although uh, i'm not decided specifically what we're going to talk about okay. because i'm waiting for a certain thing okay but uh yeah so i uh, look forward to next week and we look forward to hearing from you see you later see you